In a world cloaked in shadows, where the line between reality and myth blurs, four intrepid adventurers stand at the precipice of destiny. Welcome to the realm of the Red Sphere Guild. A few people on the Four Against Darkness Adventurers Guild Facebook page have asked me in regards to how I use One Page Mythic and Four Against Darkness together, so I've decided to put a quick video together for you. I think the first things first, you're going to need three things for this. Obviously you're going to need whatever Four Against Darkness uh, supplement you are using. You can use almost all of them. There is one that you can't use because it's more of a, um, uh, a, a choose your own adventure style book, um, and as a result you can't do that. It's um, buried of the, the four, I believe it is, or something like that. Um, however, any other um, standard for or against Darkest supplement will work, including all of the um, additional uh, card games as well you can get. Obviously, you're gonna need one page Mythic or Mythic itself. There are two different versions. There's one page that just simplifies this table somewhat, and then there's also the standard one, which makes it slightly more complicated. Essentially, we're gonna use the one page Mythic, regardless of which version we're gonna use. And then in addition to that, you're gonna need two extra dice. Specifically, you're gonna need two D10s or a D10 and a simple uh, D100 dice, just so you can roll essentially, and that is going to be your GM. So any decisions that you're gonna make throughout the whole campaign are essentially all gonna be made on this one sheet of paper. Uh, there's essentially three different parts to it. There's gonna be the Ask the Game Master, the discover meaning, and then there's a few random events, things down here as well, uh, but we'll go through them uh, as and when we get through them. So first things first, we're gonna talk about the Mythic GM emulator itself. And essentially it comes down to one very simple mechanic. And that's essentially that you set the odd that you're gonna have for any task or question you might ask. And then you're gonna roll the dice and you're gonna see what it fits within one of these four different categories. Obviously you have your yes and your no, they're very simple. They'll just you tell you one thing or the other. Um, however, you also have exceptional no and exceptional yes. Essentially this works a bit like a yes but or a yes and and a no but or a no and. You simply roll your dice. You try and work out exactly what it is based upon the table. And in this particular instance, I've got 33. Let's assume it's certain, therefore the answer is yes, and you simply go on your way. Essentially, that is the only thing you need to think about. There is an additional role to this, and essentially that comes down to the random events. So if you come up with two of exactly the same, for example, 33, as we just had, you're gonna have to ask the GM, um, and you're gonna have to generate a random event. Now, essentially the way that you do this is you roll the dice again, uh, you're going to roll them twice and you're going to work out what the discover the meaning is as a result. So quickly we're going to have 81 and we're going to have 75. So if we look all the way down here for 81 you've got official and 75 you've got powerful. So depending on what you're doing specifically within your journey you're going to have a result as direct result. Now we're going to go through examples here just so everyone's super clear on how to use it and what we're doing. But essentially we're going to use the four against darkness to have our standard campaigns and then we're going to use one page mythic to link everything together. For our first example we're going to go with a really simple one. This is the guild of the red sphere. Essentially they have a singular sphere within their guild and that's essentially the entire story is based upon that singular sphere. Now obviously it's really important to them so don't want to take it with them everywhere they go and as a result in their guild halls, the little red mark that you can see here within the town of Gamli, they're going to store that um, sphere. So they've just been on an epic journey and they're just about to come back and the first question that they're going to have is have we been robbed? It is a mechanic in For Against Darkness, specifically TTT. Um, you can just roll the dice on TTT. Essentially, it becomes a case of yes or no, and it's simple as that. However, by adding Mythic One Page DM, we're adding an extra element of um, decision making that can give us somewhat more answers than we would initially get. So. I'm in my guild house. There is the option to have something called traps within your guild in TTT, but I'm gonna assume that my guild currently has absolutely none at all. Therefore, the likelihood is of impossible, nearly impossible, very unlikely or unlikely, are somewhat negated. There's nothing there within my guild house to stop someone breaking in. However, the likeliness is purely gonna depend on what you want to do. 
So it could be that you want a nice easy game, therefore it's going to be incredibly unlikely. Or it could be that you like quite a hard game, therefore you're going to go for something that's more likely to be certain. I'm going to go with simply likely, simply because it's a fairly large style town. Um, it's a singular guild house. We're known around the area for having quite a lot of money. We just bought a new ship. And as a result, there's going to be quite a lot going on. So I'm going to say 50-50 or likely. I'm going to go with likely just because of the size of the town. So I ask the game master the question, have I been robbed? I then roll the dice. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it's going to be 0-7. Therefore, I'm looking up 0-7 and that's going to be an exceptional yes. So yes, I have been robbed, but there's also an exceptional element to it. What is that exceptional element? Now you could just say, well, obviously they've just, you know, robbed me blind, they're taking the sphere as well. Or it could be that maybe they haven't taken the sphere. So I'm going to ask the GM another question. And this time it's going to be, have they stolen the sphere? Um, sorry, before I roll, we need to work out the odds of this. Now, obviously the sphere is the really important thing within our guild. Therefore, it's going to be the best protected. Therefore, it's going to be the, the thing that they're going to try to make sure that no one has stolen. However, at the same time, it's going to be the thing that's going to draw someone's attention. For this one, I think it's probably going to be unlikely. The reason being is, yeah, it's a fantastic looking thing, but the thief might not necessarily know what it is. I mean, our guilds definitely don't, and therefore it's extremely unlikely that the thief will. And as a result, I'm going to go with unlikely. I then roll the dice again, and this time I've come up with 50. So I'm going to go on here. 50 sits in the no category. Therefore, I have been rolled but he hasn't taken the sphere. So what's the exceptional yes is my next question. Um, could it be that the thief is still there? Now that's an interesting one. So I'm gonna go with 50-50 on that one and I'm gonna roll the dice again. This time it's 14. That means yes, the thief is still there. Therefore, I can then work out what my next step is gonna be. Am I gonna speak to the thief? I'm gonna try and work out why possibly he's uh, broken in or am I gonna start asking the question of how am I going to track this guy down? Exactly what's going to happen. Therefore, you can sort of add on the journey as a direct result. Now, this did happen to me. Um, I went through a specific campaign. I was robbed. And as a result, I decided to go through one of the um, maps. Specifically, it was um, a, a totem based thing that was stolen from me. Um, and I used one of the posters, essentially taking absolutely from everything from there and then sort of adapting the story as I went by. I just picked this one at random, I have a big list. So I had essentially had to find the thief within the standard campaign. This wasn't something that I was planning. This wasn't something that was on the tracks, but simply the dice decided to say that there was a thief. I did need to track him down. And in the instance of my actual play, um, he was close, but he wasn't still within the guild. Therefore, I had to track him down on this. And essentially I added an element of play that wouldn't normally be within the standard four against darkness campaigns. The second example I'm going to use is that of people or NPCs without your campaign. So I'm in a standard town. This is called Balg. It's a town that I happen to have come across. It's actually a city, my apologies. Um, and essentially, I'm not sure if you can see the greys, but they're different sectors within the city. And as a result, they have different people in charge. I picked these people at random. Um, essentially, it was from a different book that I stole the idea from. And so there are just essentially five groups within the, uh, the story itself. And this time, instead of having to ask specifically in regards to an event, instead I can ask in regards to how these people get onto each other. So maybe I wanna know how uh, Lord Vish and the traders get on together. I'm gonna to say, I have no idea. It's a completely new city. Therefore, I'm gonna roll on the dice. It's 33. Therefore, it's gonna be a case of the answer is yes. Now, there was a really important dice there. It was 33. This means that not only do we have to answer the question of yes, but we then have to go into discover meaning. So the question was, do they get on? I said, yes, which is fantastic. I'm gonna roll the dice, that's 79 and then 11. So we're gonna look on here and I'm gonna have 79, which is gonna be obstacle, and then 11, which is going to be cold. So there's something within this story that I then need to work out how obstacle cold is gonna come into place. Now it could be, now it actually is in this instance, which is fantastic, that this is a snowy area. So cold makes absolute sense. And obstacle is the case of 
whoever the parties are, in this case the traders and Lord Vish, are both trying to get something into the city or out of the city, but the snow is causing issues. Therefore, they're working together to try and work out how to get around that snow. Therefore, I've just added an extra element in. So I'm into the city now. I know that those two people get on and I know it's snowy. Is this something that I can help on? Once again, I can then ask on the Mythic GM to work out exactly what the likelihood is, is to then work out how I can then add that element into my story. And essentially, Mythic GM and then Four Against Darkness come together to make a story that you can then use the dungeons and essentially link them all together. Hopefully that helps everyone. And if there's any questions, just drop them in the comments below.